Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Long Talk Radio. Conversation, and I am your host, William Crichton, where we bring you the best and the latest in combat sports. Quick shout out to my man uh, Tommy D and the fellas over at Fight Book MMA, man. Um, my man Tommy's always showing me much love. A fellow, uh, I believe, jujitsu practitioner, MMA practitioner, so to speak, uh, and also a fellow MMA podcast host, man. And he's one of the dudes that uh. Gave me tips and pointers and, and it motivated me to uh, go to the next level, so to speak. So, big shout out to my man, Tommy D, if you're listening. We, we got to wake up, bro. Um, but, uh, looking at last night's events, a uh, few things we want to talk about and a few bits of news in the world of combat sports. We want to talk about last night's results from... A UFC fight night. That was a pretty stat card. My man, Mad Max. Max Holloway is back in full effect. We will talk about his outstanding performance last night and also pretty decent performance from his opponent, Calvin Guitar. But we will talk about that fight more in depth in a second. Uh, we also have uh, some news from the world of boxing. Uh, apparently, the Kovalev fight that was scheduled to happen, when is it? It was later on this year. Uh, I think it was either later on this month or towards the beginning of February. Uh, nevertheless, whichever date it was, was scheduled for, it has been canceled due to what appears to be a failed drug test on Kovalev's behalf. Uh, we will discuss that as well. Since we're on the subject of drug testing... There was an announcement made by the UFC in regards to the USADA. They have, at least at this point, eliminated marijuana use as a UFC violation. Uh, in layman's terms, that means fighters won't get busted for smoking weed anymore. That is the latest announcement from the UFC in regards to the USADA, uh, the United States Anti-Doping Association that runs that, does the testing, excuse me, for uh, most combat sports and athletics. Uh, they are scratching marijuana off their banned substance list. We'll discuss that. Uh, also, in the world of boxing, it appears that a deal has been done for the Joshua versus Fury heavyweight title fight. That's also an interesting piece of news we want to discuss. And, of course, finally, before we leave today, we will take a look at Two events. We have two events up and coming this week. We have one on Wednesday, which is a UFC fight night that will take place Wednesday the 20th. And also a major, major UFC event, UFC 257, on Saturday the 23rd. So we will be talking about those two events as well. As usual, you can always chime in, keep it popping on the Facebook live feed. Always keep it jumping on the IG live feed, or you can call in, talk to me, give me your thoughts. 516-590-0996. So, we shall begin by discussing last night's fight. Um, I can't even really say last night. It was more so uh, uh, in the late afternoon going into the evening due to the time difference over there. And uh, they had to fight in Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. Uh, that was yesterday, uh, but it was a pretty decent card. I was flipping back and forth between that and the various football games. You had that, you know, the 
Green Bay and Rams, Green Bay won. And I was a little hurt that my Ravens lost, but see you next year. Still a fan. Nevertheless, we have, or had, um, a decent fight card yesterday, but particularly uh, the main event, which my man Max, man Max Holloway, Max Blessed Holloway, as he goes by, put on an outstanding performance. Former featherweight champ, Mad Max. Uh, nothing short of a championship-like performance yesterday. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, as from what I've seen, quite a few people are as well, would this fight put him back and into championship contention? And it appears as if it quite possibly could. Um... It, it, it was just a, a, a really awesome performance against what looked to be a, a stubborn opponent in Calvin Qatar. Um, a five-round fight with the distance with Max winning by clearly a unanimous decision. I'll get to that in a second as to why it was so clear. Um, and this was a good bounce-back win for Max after losing two close decisions uh, to Alexander Volonovsky for that featherweight championship. The first one, uh, it could have went either way. I can see the first fight that Max had versus Volkanovsky. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm as big of a Mad Max fan as I am. I'm trying not to be biased here. I think it could have went either way, but I can clearly see where the judges could have ruled and did rule in favor of Volkanovsky in that first fight. Um, so I put up no argument there. That second fight that they had between Max and Volkanovski, I really, really feel like Mad Max got robbed that second time around. So you never know. This could lead, or last night's victory could lead to a possible trilogy. I don't know. Um, but last night, he definitely put forth a, a valid cause to do so. Um, uh, now, the fun fact. Fun fact about last night's fight. Uh, my man Dave, what's good, bro? Um, Mad Max, Max Holloway, landed a UFC record 400. I could probably stop right there, but I'm not. 445 significant strikes against Calvin Qatar. I'm going to say that again. This man hit Calvin Qatar significantly throughout five rounds. 400. 145 times. Jesus Christ. How do you even like the stat guys must have been losing their minds last night. Man. I don't even know. So not only did he hit this guy with significant strikes 445 times. That is not a typo. That is not a misprint. That's the actual number. In round four alone, just in round four by itself, he landed 141 of those strikes Breaking Max's own, breaking his own record for most landed in a round. That is insane. That is insane. Um, and, and the kicker behind both of those tidbits, of both of those fun facts, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me uh, is that toward the end of that fight, going toward the latter end of that fifth round, Max didn't really see, if, if he showed any sign of being winded or gassed at all, it wasn't until towards the very end of that fight, um, which also is indicative of how good Max, good a shape Max is in. Um, and not to take away from the performance uh, that Calvin Qatar put up last night, um, uh, uh, <laughs> Max dropped a hint uh, last night about both of them receiving their 50K bonus. He said it during the post-fight interview in the, in the octagon. That he was like, yo, we both getting 50K. What's good? Um, it just, just Max's performance was way too much. The onslaught was too much for him to bear. Um, I just, I don't know. Like, wow, it's crazy. Uh, my man Dave, Max brought all the petty to this fight. He said, bat, bat, bat. Yeah, he did. Like, he was the best beatboxer with his <laughs> Yo, on some Dougie Fresh type shit last night, bro. Yo, this joint. I, and you know... As for me, again, me flicking back and forth uh, between the fight and the football game, I was obviously, for obvious reasons, I was focusing more on the fight than on the football game because that was the earlier fight 
and the Ravens game, which was the game that was most important to me, didn't start till around 8 Eastern. Um, so with me looking, I don't know if I, I could see the it, it, the more that the fight progressed, you can see the more one-sidedness, if that's a thing, uh, towards Max's favor as the fight progressed. Um, I didn't realize, as, as stat-wise and numbers-wise, it was that one-sided. Like, how do you hit somebody and not just like pity pats, like significant strikes? 445 times in one fight. If somebody would have told me that would, if, if somebody before the fight would have told me that that was going to happen, I would have laughed. But again, this man landed a UFC record 445 significant strikes last night against Qatar. Big shout out to Mad Max Holloway, man. Like, unbelievable. And in that fourth round alone, I'll say it again, in just round number four, in a five-round fight, he landed 141 of those 445 strikes. That is sick. That's sick. Yeah, Dave, what's good, bro? Wow. Um, that is insane. So, um, <laughs> I remember, what round was that? Was it the third or the, the fourth? I'm, I'm trying to remember which round it is. And for whatever reason, I didn't put the round specifically in my notes. But um, that lead elbow, when he hit Qatar with that elbow and it dented his face up real nice. Um, and you can see that that was when he more so started leaking, so to speak. But just, I, I'm just amazed at the stat sheet behind that fight. Like if you're able to hit within a five round, five rounds, five minutes a round, that's 25 minutes. If you can land 445 significant strikes in one fight on a dude, that speaks volumes. Um, speaks volumes to your accuracy, your, your strike capacity, your endurance, your cardio, your amount of win, because he didn't seem as if he was tired until the latter end of the fight. And, I, and I'm just saying this as a jiu-jitsu guy. Um, I'm, a, I'm not a, you know, my, I, I, I don't know if my man in law is looking, but I have people to help me in my striking because my striking is not up to par in regards to a lot of these other dudes that I see. I'm more of a grappler, more of a ground guy. But just the amount of, like, just thinking about the level of boxing that he had to put up to be able to uh, achieve that stat, that stat line, man. Like, yo, unbelievable. Um, again, for those of you, a lot of you guys that are watching or listening via uh, the podcast or watching via IG, a lot of times when you see me read the comments, the Facebook live feed is always jumping. So a lot of times I read the comments from the Facebook live feed. So even though you won't see it, you'll hear me read the comment and then respond or answer a question. My man Dave, I see. I forgot Volk was the champ after hearing these stats and he shouldn't be after that second fight. I just spoke about that. Um, I was saying that the first fight he had versus Volkanovski, um, although I felt as though it could have went either way, I have to be honest and not be as biased as a big as a Max Holloway fan I am that I can see where they ruled in favor of Volkanovski. I have to be honest. That second fight was a straight robbery. He just got robbed without the pistol. Uh, Mad Max did. Which lets or leads me to believe that there could be valid cause. Um, I want to say trilogy, but can you technically call it a trilogy if one half of that trilogy won two of the fights? So I'm not really sure how I want to call that, but I really feel like uh, uh, Max might deserve that next go-round, man. Like, looking at the rankings. Let me pull the ranking structure up for that featherweight. Where are my rankings? There you are. Um, Max is number one. T-City is number two. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, you got, uh, Zabit, number three, Yeah, Rodriguez, number four, Chan Sung Jung, number five, which also nobody can see. So, I mean, I don't know, man. Let me see. <laughs> My man Dave, you didn't write it down in your notes, because Max fought the whole night as on continuous round. <laughs> hey, looking at the fight, Dave, you would think so. And th th at least that's what it felt like. Um, my man Dwight, I gave Volk the first fight. 
Um, I, again, I, I think the fight could have went either way, but with the performance that Volk put up, I would I refuse to argue with the decision. So if they say Volk got it, looking at how that fight, that first fight progressed and it went down, if the judges say Volk got it, I'm going with the judges. I don't know what the hell them judges were smoking on that second fight. They were smoking on, and was it crack? It must have been crack. I don't know what the hell they were smoking on. Because that second fight, that judges were straight, but sort of. I don't know what that was. But nevertheless, we're here. Um, which is also why I always say, you don't leave it in the hands of the judges. You win, and you win convincingly, removing all doubt. No, it doesn't always work out that way, but that's the surefire way between to decide between a W and an L. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I, I, they, Dwight, I'm telling you, that, that second fight, Jack, I don't know what was going on, man. They, they should have the, the uh, uh, USADA should have been checking them judges that second fight. Nevertheless, oh, since we're on the subject of drug testing, that's another topic we'll discuss in a second. We'll talk about that as well. Um, there was a big announcement with the UFC in regards to marijuana use. But we'll get to that. Um, uh, but listen, and see, and the thing with T City, with Brian T City Ortega, is this: you know that he fights Volkanovski in March. He's he's going to fight Volkanovski for the featherweight title. Um, now remember, back in 2018, Mad Max beat the. I'm not going to say he beat the hell out of T-City, but it was a decisive victory. Um, and both of those guys, T-City, I felt bad for T-City because I liked the kid, man. He didn't want to quit. But it was, a, it was he was beaten to the point where the doctor had to stop him. Um, uh, was it, oh, did the doctor stop it or did the ref stop it? I can't remember. I had to look it up. But, but the fight was stopped is my point. Um, and I kind of felt bad for T-City because I'm a big fan of both. I'm a, I'm a bigger fan of Max Holloway. But this kid, T, Brian T. City Ortega, got a heart, man. He beat the brakes off. Yeah, he, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to give some sort of compensation for the, how large Ortega's heart was during that fight, man. But remember, Ortega's last fight, he looked like a brand new, improved, sharp as hell Brian Ortega. So uh, uh, you, uh, you have to consider sometimes that when these fighters go through the training with the dispensation of time, when they come back to run it one more again, you have to consider the possibility that they're not the same fighter anymore. Now, whether that goes for the better or goes for the worse is left to be determined. But I, he just he didn't look like the same fighter that was fighting versus uh, Max Holloway the last time. Um let me see. Who was that? Who was that last fight that T City had against? I'm about to pull it up right now. Where's my Brian T City Ortega tab? Y'all know my computer got snail speed. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> Chan Sung Jump. And that was a dope fight, man. That's who it was. Let me see. <laughs> my man Dave. He beat him so bad he grabbed his hands and showed him how to talk. <laughs> Yo, you terrible, yo. You terrible. But uh <laughs> But um, my, my point is that the uh, Korean zombie, uh, Chan Sung Jung, it, yep, it was. It was Chan Sung Jung. I was just talking about him not being a sleeper. He's ranked, what, number five, number six? What is he ranked in the featherweight? He's ranked number five. So, um, like, yo, this featherweight division, at least the top half of it is stacked. Um, yeah, all the way down to maybe the first ten dudes. I mean, might, you can go further depending on your specifics. But, um, see, and the thing with this, like, if, so let's, hypotheticals here. Um, let's just say T-City uh, beats Volkanovski. T-City walks away with the featherweight strap. So would that, does, now does that mean that him and T-City are going to run it back? Or does he want some get back versus Volkanovski? If Volkanovski beats T City, you can cancel all that. Just throw the theory on the trash. It's gone. Um, because that means that he's not going to be worried about T City anymore. Um, but this theory is dependent upon if T City beats Volkanovski in March. If he beats Volkanovski, then we're going to have some issue on our hands, man. Like, I don't know. That's going to. It's going to. The division the, the is going to look like this. Until that following fight. Um, 
my man Dwight, and he beat him pretty good. I had Zombie taking that, but Ortega came to thump. Um, again, like, yo, uh, T-City has got one of the biggest, like, his fight heart is just, like, ridiculous. Um, his toughness, man. Um, and he, he just looks like a new and improved Ortega. I I think I'd, Brian Ortega beats Volk. I see you, Dave. I'm going on a diet so stamp. <laughs> um... Uh, if if he fought if he fights Volkanovski the same way he fought the Korean Zombie, ah, I, I might be leaning a little toward Ortega, man. I, I I I try not to be biased, but I I think I'm leaning a little toward a little more towards Ortega. Uh, Dwight, I think Max good with either fight. He is competitive with both. He has an easier path through Ortega, I think. Um. As much as I would love to agree with that, Dwight, I just, I don't feel like that, I don't feel like if they do run that back, if Holloway and Ortega run that back, I do not see that fight going the same way because of the obvious, the eye test in regards to Ortega's improvements. Not saying that Max wouldn't still, be, can't still beat him. I just don't think the fight would be it's clearly one-sided as the previous fight. Um, this, 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 this is interesting, man. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until March to find out the results of Volky versus uh, Ortega. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, oh, but last night, for those of you who saw the post-fight interview, what did Max Holloway say? He made reference to another fight we'll talk about towards the latter end of the show. Um, being a fill-in uh, for the lightweight bout if something goes wrong. Of course, we know we'll talk about uh, McGregor versus Poirier. Uh, that's going to happen uh, this Saturday. So, man, Max, he said, look, all I have to say is there's a big, big fight next week with Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor. Guess what? Your boy is staying all into the week, meaning he'll be staying there at Fight Island. Um, and if anything happens or someone drops off, Dana knows my number and can hit me up. Um, now, Max is willing to go uh, lightweight with this fight if he needs to fill in. Now, you know, he's on the lightweight ranking structure listed at... Uh, let me see. Uh, I just saw his name. To the top, to the top, to the top. Where did I just see his name? Okay, no. Let me see. He's in the pound for pound. They got him ranked number eight at pound for pound. I know he's number one in the featherweight. I thought they might have had him. I don't. I'm um, looking at the ranking structure now. But if he's willing to go fight, let me see. If he's willing to go fight up to fight for that strap as a fill-in, then I say, listen, Bob, I mean, hopefully nothing will happen because I would much rather see the Poirier versus Carter, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, if he's willing to go, hey, man, listen, I say fill him in. If Poirier don't retire McClown, I'm never rooting for him again. <laughs> hey, I got to I gotta be honest, the way I don't see that happening. Um, I, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute, man. I, I promise I will. Uh, I, I just, I, I don't see that happening in regards to, uh, you know what? I'll reserve my opinions slash predictions for that fight until when we get to that, when we take a look at this coming week's events. Um, but before that, uh, just a good, good look for last night's fight, an even better look for Mad Max Holloway and his awesome performance. Um, I just, how do you hit somebody with, Significant strikes 445 times, man. Jeez, Louise. I'm, I'm just my out of shape. I'm not even sure if I could throw 445 punches. Jeez, listen, bro. Wow. Uh, my man Dave, watch McGregor take it again. Dog Dustin don't have nothing on the feet for Connor. His best bet literally ground game all night. I have no faith in that guy. <laughs> hey, hold, you know, hold that thought, Dave. Hold that thought. I promise you, if you can stick around toward the latter end of the show, Hold that thought. <laughs> um, uh, man. But, uh,
<laughs> that last round for the fight last night, uh, Max Holloway, he could hear Dan Hardy and Daniel Cormier discussing how good his boxing skills were, uh, cage side, and he turned to them and responded, I am the best boxer in the UFC, before uh, hitting Qatar with a cam combination. I'm about to get to Buckley right now, uh, and the karma thereof, um, if you want to call it that. But uh, Max is ranked number one in the featherweight division. He goes now to 22-6, and six, getting back into the win column last night. Uh, Qatar, unfortunately, falls to 22-5. and five. Not sure if this will affect uh, his number six ranking because he lost to the number one guy. Hopefully it does not. I do not think this is the last we've seen of Mr. Qatar. Uh, unfortunately, he had to take an L, but good, good fight, good showing uh, for both of those fighters last night. I am fully convinced that they both received that 50, 50 stack bonus, and uh, let's wait until March to see what happens with uh, Volky, with Ortega, with Holloway, and the featherweight division. Um, now, the other fight on that card I want to discuss, Dave... <laughs> Is uh wow the middleweight bout between oh boy <laughs> with Alicio the Chirico uh beating Joy Quinn Buckley by first round TKO. For those of you who follow MMA and or might or might not be familiar with Joy Quinn Buckley, he came to prominence and or a bit of fame via the viral spit kick TKO he had. A few months back where uh, he was fighting, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but it's, it's been on the internet everywhere. He caught the guy's kick and responded with his own spinning back kick that just totally dropped the guy. Well, unfortunately, he got dropped last night uh, being on the business end of a, uh, a pretty kind of sweet roundhouse kick. From uh, De Chirico last night that dropped him, finishing Buckley in a highlight reel <laughs> finish. Uh, my man Dwight, he beat him via exorcism. And Hall's kick is still better, in my opinion, down there. <laughs> hey, I had that debate a while back, which kick was better, man. I'm still riding the fence. Um, I think, I, I don't know, man. I'm riding the fence, man. I, I think Hall's kick was more devastating more powerful. I think Buckley's kick was more just flashy on the end, from an athletic perspective, a little more entertaining, I guess. I don't know. Um, nevertheless, uh, the proverbial chickens came home to roost last night uh, in regards to Buckley's loss via first round TKO. Um, I Totally did not see that coming, man. I was my jaw was dropped when I saw that happen. Wow. Um fight started off kind of slow. Uh Buckley still at the pearly gates waiting on that earth. <laughs> uh, Buckley, sir, your Uber your Uber has arrived, sir. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yo, y'all terrible, man. Um Wow. I, I just, I didn't see it coming. I did not. That was the last predictable outcome that I would have imagined for that fight last night. Um, just, uh, and he, he had blocked the earlier head kick that, um, Chirico uh, put up, man. And, um, he hit him with that, look like, what looked like a knee to the chest. Uh, before that kick, before he hit him with the kick, um, and when he hit him with that kick, uh, Buckley went down, dude jumped on him, went straight to the hammer fist, uh, and that was it. Neither did, neither did Buckley. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, Dave. Um, and you can see, like, the emotion like, that Chirico had last night after the fight, man, in the octagon during the post-fight interview. Dude was like, he was caught up in the moment. Like, I, I don't think he expected to win. But nevertheless, he did. Um, that they talked when, when they talked to him. He said, talking to uh, John Ennick, um, he said, Listen, I'm so happy to be interviewed by you 
but I have to remind myself after three fights I didn't get an interview that I don't <laughs> that I don't like that you only interview the, the winner. This is what he said to John Anik. Um, this is not correct. M MMA is about two people always. <laughs> I understand his viewpoint. Um, depending on the circumstances, that could be true. You know, I guess with someone wanting to find out if there was a specific situation that happened during the fight that caused them to get the L, you might want to find out what was going on or whatever. I mean, I don't know. It's situational interview, so to speak, but I, I see where he's coming from. I do. Um, it doesn't always work out that way, but, you know, but he got the W last night in, in surprising and a bit of a alarming fashion, man. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, 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 I mean, it's a lot of people just figure thinking that's karma. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if I, I, looking at it from a karma viewpoint, I mean, when Buckley did score that viral knockout, like, I, I don't think he, there was any ill will there for him to stack up any negative karma. I, I don't know. I'm not a mind reader, but it, it appeared to be that way. It's just the irony of him getting his win with that viral spinning back kick and then taking his L last night via the roundhouse kick to the head. Um, there's a little bit of irony in there, I guess. Yeah, I can see that. Um, ugh, I don't know, man. Um, Good, good win. Surprising win, nonetheless, for Dicharico. Uh He goes to 13-5 and five, uh, with his W last night, getting him back into the win column after losing three in a row. So I, I can understand why um, he would have been emotional after that W, uh, especially with the viral momentum, that the hype that came with fighting Buckley. Uh, unfortunately, Buckley falls to 12 and 4. This is his first loss after winning two straight. Uh, my man Dave, you know, Buckley showed something else last night. Gamesmanship, something I've never seen from him. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, yeah, I agree. Because that, that, that was a very humbling loss uh, for Buckley. More particularly with the manner in which how he lost. I can see how that would have been quite humbling for him. Um, so, that, I mean, that it, it was a good look for him to stay, you know, classy. Um, uh, my man Dave, uh, I, I I agree. I, I think he just got uh, he got caught. It happens to the best of them, man. Um, sometimes you're the giver. Sometimes you're the receiver. Um, sometimes, you know, have fighters that give more than others. You have fighters that receive more than others. So I'd have to agree. He got caught, man. Um it just wasn't his night, man. I, I, obviously, with him being as skilled a fighter as he is, I, I, I definitely do not think this is the last we've seen of Buckley. But I, I was pegged at, I, and surprised at how that fight ended, man. More particularly with the, the first round jump, man. I, I, it, it took me for three before a loop. Um, just did not see that coming. But Nevertheless, we're here. Um, yeah, so Ch Chirico gets back. That was his first win after losing three straight. So I would have been uh, a little emotional too, man, getting back into the W column. Um, he unfortunately snapped Buckley's winning streak at two. Uh, Buckley goes now to 12 and four. Um and I don't think Buckley was ranked in the division, in the middleweight division. Looking at the middleweights, so Buckley still has to climb up that ladder. No, neither one of them were. Um, looking at the ranking structure now of the middleweight division, um, I, I see at this point no reason that the structure, at least for those two fighters, will change uh, You know, when they adjust the structure you know, Wednesday slash Thursday, whichever day they choose to adjust it. Um, but, uh, it, it, there's a possibility that that loss could make Buckley's stock drop a little bit, um, especially with all the hype that came with that viral knockout. So I don't know, but it, it absolutely is not the last we've seen of him. I'm convinced it's not. So he'll be back. He'll be back probably the strongest before. Um, uh, 
<laughs> my bad. I took the dog out and heard someone scream, oh, uh, uh, and ran in and left the damn dog outside. <laughs> hey, Dwight, you got to keep up, bro. <laughs> it, it, it didn't happen that quick, though. I mean, the first round, they're like, wow. He got caught with the Louisville slugger to the temple. That man spoke with the Dalai Lama and re returned a new person. <laughs> Y'all got to stop, man. <laughs> oh, man. Um, he'll be back. I, 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 Buckley will be back. Um, I, I think it would take a, a, a lot more to... Uh, I, I do believe his stock will drop a little bit. I think it will take more than that for a fighter like Buckley. For his stock to drop significantly. Um, so do I think it will drop? Absolutely. Um, I don't think it will drop to the point where we won't see his name mentioned in regards to promising middleweight, I guess, prospects with the word I would use. Uh, I thought he had a minute. I, <laughs> I did too. Um, so I don't know, man. Hmm, I'm not sure. Wow. Buck will be fine. It will just reset him a bit. That's all. I I, I totally agree, one hundred percent. I think he'll be fine. Um, I I really I feel like he's too good not to be. The only thing that would prove me wrong in that aspect would be the result of his next fight. We'll have to wait and see. But I just in my opinion, I I, don't, I think he'll be perfectly fine. I think Buckley will be fine. Um, so also on that card, uh, you have Carlos Condit. He got another win. He beat Matt Brown. By UD, uh, Lee Jinglian defeated Santiago Ponzinibbio uh, by first round TKO. That was a, a bit much, but yeah, for those of you who saw that fight, uh, Jocelyn Edwards beat Wu Yanan by UD. Carlos Felipe beat Justin Taffa by split decision. Ramazan Emiv beat David Zawada by split decision. Vanessa Mello beat Sarah Moras by unanimous decision. And Austin Lingo defeated Jacob Kilburn also by UD. Uh, the Reaper did not pay a whole lot of visits last night, but for the ones that we did see him come through, uh, the Reaper did pull up a few times. Um, but a lot of decision wins last night. Um... Yeah, just, you know, as usual, tell me what you guys thought about last night's card. Keep the Facebook live feed jumping. Keep the IG live feed jumping. You can always call in and talk to the boy, 516-590-0996. Um, so moving along, a bit of news in the world of boxing. Uh, one of, apparently, uh, this report I received or I read on ESPN, uh, one of the most looked upon events for boxing next year, uh, looks like it has been canceled. We have uh, Sergei Kovalev. Uh, his fight apparently has been canceled via a failed drug test. Um... His January 30th bout, which again, I couldn't remember the date, but I say in my notes, uh, which was scheduled for later on this month, um, between him and Bek Milikuziev has been scratched after Kovalev failed a drug test due to him testing positive for a banned substance. Uh, Golden Boy Promotions made this announcement Friday. Dave, I see you. Reaper ain't have time since he was catching the football game. <laughs> hey, 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 watch it, man. Oh, my Ravens, bro. Watch it. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you, man. Um, yeah, Kovalev, uh, he was informed about his uh, negative drug. I'm sorry, not negative. Positive, excuse me, his test. Uh, with his A sample that he submitted uh, to the ADA uh, on December 30th. And that test yielded external testosterone and metabolites according to the test results that were obtained by ESPN. Um, Golden Boy, which promotes Milikuziev, said uh, that the CSAC, California State Athletic Commission, has determined, therefore, the bout 
must be canceled. Yikes. Um, Golden Boy put out a statement saying that while we are crushed for Milikuziev, we know that he will nevertheless have a tremendous year in 2021. Um, that was the statement that Golden Boy put out on Thursday. This Thursday they just passed. Uh, Kovalev's promoter, uh, main event CEO Kathy Duva, said that the former champ have pro has proven throughout his career to be a clean fighter and that he maintains and stands by the statement that he did not purposefully ingest any banned substances. So sounds like they're going to attempt to appeal and do some further testing to try to clear Kovalev's name. Unfortunately, with the time that takes, that uh, the January 30th bout had to be scrapped, so I don't know how they're going to move forward with rescheduling the fight. Apparently, it's going to have to happen post-investigation and further testing and things of that nature. Um, Ms. Duva, uh, his promoter, Kovalev's promoter, also stated that the company is planning on having his B sample tested by VADA, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association. However, it appears that those results will no longer have any bearing on a potential fight against Milikuziev, obviously, because the fight got canceled. One of those boxings, he's, you know, they just wanted him to fight this up-and-coming prospect. But it doesn't look like that that's going to happen now. Uh, the 37-year-old Kovalev hasn't fought since November of 2019 when he suffered an 11th round KO loss to Canelo Alvarez. I remember that fight. Yikes. Um, so uh, 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 it looks like they're going to attempt to further investigate to get to the bottom of this. But as of right now, that fight is done. Um, so since we're on the subject of drug testing, uh, I'm going to take a quick break here for my sponsor. But when we come back, we will talk about an announcement that the UFC made. They made the announcement that the USADA, the United States Anti-Doping Agency, has essentially eliminated marijuana use as a UFC violation. So to make a long story short, we'll talk about this in a section, but it appears, at least for now, that marijuana use will no longer get UFC fighters busted. Wow. And somewhere, the Diaz brothers smile. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The Diaz brothers are the Cheech and Chong of the UFC. Man, I tell you, I love those guys, man. <laughs> you talk about Sir Smoke a lot. Jeez, Louise. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Let me uh, give a shout out to my sponsor real quick. Uh, the Lewis Financial Group with Russell G. Lewis. He is an authorized agent with Progressive Insurance. This is an agency with the honesty and integrity that comes with a handshake. They represent a plethora of insurance carriers and financial services companies, including Progressive, as well as other carriers such as Foremost, Haggerty, American Collectors, Aetna, Assurance, Bankers Group, Universal Property and Casualty, Selective Flood, Ameriplan, Legal Shield, Transamerica, Nationwide, Victorian, College Funding Solutions, Alliance, Access Insurance, and much, much more. He's licensed in multiple states, including here in Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Arizona, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and Texas, so you can get the help that you need across the USA. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. You get the best of these major carriers and the expertise that comes with the Lewis Financial Group representing them. You can see more of what they do by visiting them online at www.lewisfinancialgroup.net or you can call them up and get a quote. 443 622 0561 and speak to an agent Monday through Friday between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. They're also available on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Once again, that's the Lewis Financial Group with Russell G. Lewis. www.lewisfinancialgroup.net or call them up 443 622 0561. My man Joe, what's good, bro? That's my man right there. 
Alright, so back to the subject of the US ADA testing, or lack thereof, at least from this point for now. Uh, another report that came from ESPN that I saw some of last night and I got the rest of it this morning. The UFC has essentially scratched marijuana off the list of punishable offenses in its anti-doping policy. Uh, the US uh, ADA in conjunction obviously with the UFC, the UFC made this announcement Thursday. Or the US ADA said so Thursday, excuse me. And the UFC just confirmed. Uh, beginning retroactively uh, with January 1st, a positive drug test for THC, the psychoactive ingredient in cannabis, will no longer be considered a violation unless the USADA, the United States Anti-Doping Agency, <clears throat> is able to prove that an athlete intentionally used it for performance enhancing purposes, which is going to be super, super hard to do. Um, the UFC Senior Vice President of Athlete Health and Performance, Jeff Nowitzki, told ESPN that the decision means that the USADA's burden of proof on any positive drug test for cannabis will be extremely high because they're going to have to do the extensive investigations to prove that the positive marijuana test caused performance enhancement, which they're not going to be able to do. So these guys are going to be smoking, 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 and some more smoking. I promise you. Um, now, essentially, the emphasizing marijuana sanctions completely. That's what's going to wind up happening. Novitsky said that the USADA would have to prove that a fighter was impaired due to cannabis just prior to the fight in order to impose a sanction. So in the only way that they will be able to penalize the fighter is for them to be able to prove that the marijuana had a significant impact on the outcome of the fight. Good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of one instance in any historical cases, this is what Novitsky said, uh, where the, that evidence has been there because it, it's way too hard to prove. It would probably require visual signs if the athlete shows up at an event stumbling, smelling like weed, eyes bloodshot, things like that. <clears throat> Diaz brothers. <clears throat> and that's something you rarely, if you ever see. I certainly have it in my six years with the UFC. So I and I, I, I think this is, in just in my opinion, a good look for the UFC. Because I don't feel as though that 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 the, the, the marijuana use impacts the fight in any way. If anything, it would have a negative impact on the fighter that, that uses it in regards to slowing the fighter down or making him impaled or slow and it doesn't see doesn't never work for the Diaz brothers they still been winning so let me see I see you Dave I'll buy us all a pound of Kush for the Duster versus Carter fight I said what I said <laughs> hey bro I wish I could smoke but the, my career choices uh, do, do not allow me to <laughs> I'm, I'm with you Dwight I can't light up I wish I could man but I made the career choices that I made, so I have to live with that decision. Uh, yeah, my job will drug test us in a heartbeat like that, so I, I can't, unfortunately. Um, so my, my my thing is, you know, sipping. Um, but I, I, I'm definitely for this, man. I I I think that this is actually might have been a bit overdue. Um, but we're here. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, it's, it says, even if the USADA did find such evidence, Novitsky said that the, f <laughs> I see you, Dave. Um, it says, give me one second here. I don't want smoke with the government. Pun, pun I see what you did there. <laughs> um, I'm going to be Nick Diaz, ha, ha, ha. That's, that's big, Dave. That's a big statement there. <laughs> um, even if the USADA did find such evidence, uh, the guy Novitsky said that the fighter in question would likely get an admittance into a treatment program rather than suspension. Um, I'm not sure why they obviously smoke because they want to. Uh, you gonna, why would you force the fighter to stop if he's not going to get in trouble for it? 
That's the part I'm confused on. But nevertheless, we're here. Um, he, all, he also went on to say, why the hell do we care what someone did a week before, let alone a night before, when it doesn't have any effect on their ability to fight? Good question. Many fighters, Novitsky said, use marijuana in lieu of opioids or depressant drugs like Xanax or Ambien, which I'm sure are two drugs that they would get busted for. Um, the change is designed excuse me, to prioritize fighter health and safety by not punishing fighters who may need treatment for substance abuse, hmm. which may lead to a fighter being impaired and jeopardize his or her safety in the octagon. That was part of the U.S. ADA statement. I think that's pretty dope, man. Um, but fighters are not totally out of the woods yet. While USADA will no longer be stringent on positive marijuana tests, most athletic commissions that oversee the UFC and its events still can be. So it's going to take, I, I'm assuming it's going to take uh, groups like the NSAC in Nevada to follow suit. I feel like they eventually will because the USADA are, uh, I guess, predominantly the governing body. So it, they, the other smaller statewide bodies will probably follow suit. What they usually do in situations like this, I don't know how long that's going to take. Yeah, as y'all can see, I got a pit bull on me right here. Um, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, again, the NSAC, has suspended fighters up to nine months and overturned victories to no contests. Over the past two years, for testing positive for cannabis. The Diaz brothers again. Last year, the NSAC did begin reducing cannabis suspensions to six months or less. The NSAC suspended UFC fighters Bevan Lewis six months and fined him $1,200 on Wednesday for a positive drug test for cannabis. The CSAC, California State Athletic Commission, see these different state bodies or have, you know, or have to catch up, have recently begun finding fighters $100 for positive marijuana tests with no other sanctions. So they just caught the fines. Um, you never really know. Uh, in my opinion, yeah, this guy is all over the podcast. Yeah. He's already been on that. He's fine. Uh, in my, I see you, Dave. Uh, I remember the day they handed Nick Diaz the five-year ban for smoking. That was crazy, right? Even if I would have been the governing body to hand over the ban, I don't think I would have made it that long. But nevertheless, we're here. Um, in my opinion, they killed his career with that one. Uh, um, I, I, I wouldn't say that specifically killed it. I, I, that was definitely a significant factor. In my hands down. Hands down. Um, wow, but nevertheless, we're here. So, before we roll out, we want to take a look at the two events that we have coming up this week. We talked about it in brief at the beginning of the show, but we're going to just, you know, lay it out right here real quick. Uh, so, we have two UFC events. Uh, we have the UFC Fight Night this Wednesday coming up, the 20th. There's a fight on that card, which it looks interesting, which is the main event. Uh, we have a welterweight bout. Uh, number eight, Michael Chisia, Chisa, Chisa, Ch hmm. tongue tied. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Michael Chiesa, there you go. Uh, versus number nine, Neil Magny. Uh, y'all got me sound like I need a drink. Uh, Chiesa is 17 and four, and he's won three fights in a row. Uh, Magny is 24 and seven. And he's also won three fights in a row. Um, somebody's streak has to come to an end. Uh, I, I'm wondering who it's going to be. Uh, I'm curious to see how this fight is going to go, man. Because, uh, I don't know, Ch Chiesa is a purple belt BJJ. Uh, but he has no wins by KL. And, and not that his striking is lagging in any way. Just the, the amount of power, I guess. I don't know. Um, out of 17 wins, he has 11 by submission. So that's indicative of something. Um, would he be focused on a ground game versus a, a brown belt BJJ like Magny? I don't know. You know, But Magny, on the other hand, he has 14 of his 24 wins by decision. So I don't know which way I want to go with this one. Um, but the main gem is this coming Saturday, the 23rd. Sean, what's good, baby? Um, 
the lightweight bout at UFC 257. This is going to be the kicker. Um, the lightweight bout between number two, Dustin Poirier, and number four, Conor McGregor. Uh, I, my wife is a huge Conor McGregor fan, and I still can't figure out why. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Nevertheless, uh, they, they, this is... I can't even call this his comeback fight, man, because he just had that fight not too long ago against Cowboy. But nevertheless, um, this is their second uh, disco together. Uh, the first time these two men met in the octagon uh, was back in September of 2014 with uh, Mystic Mac uh, winning the first fight by first round TKO. McGregor won. Um, that was back during, during UFC 178. Uh, obviously, they both have had successful MMA careers since. Um, this time around, the, this fight, uh, I, I'm, as much as it pains me to say it, I really feel like McGregor is going to take this. Um, he just looks like he's in such good condition, man. And we've seen how McGregor keeps a high level of skill attained after a, a layoff, whether it be a brief layoff or a bit, I, I just, he, you know, I, I feel like he's going to take this. Um, but this time around, this fight could be a tone setter for the lightweight division. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, Dustin is 26-6. and six. He most recently got back into the W column in June after his loss to Khabib. Um, now, as far as Mac, as far as McGregor, he hasn't fought since January uh, of last year, January of 2020, when he made easy work of Cowboy Cerrone. Max sits at 22 and 4. Um, this one is, is a bit of a pickle. I, 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 I think this fight, for obvious reasons, is going to be a significant factor determining how the lightweight division moves forward. And I really feel like Conor is going to take this. Um... I don't know, man. And see, the other fight, and, and this is the thing, the other fight that will set the tone for this lightweight division is the other fight on this card, which will be uh, number six, Dan Hooker, versus the UFC newcomer, Michael Chandler. Um, Chandler, for those of you who follow MMA, you are very aware that this is, this is, even though this is his first UFC fight, this is absolutely not Chandler's first rodeo. Uh, he's a former Bellator lightweight champ, uh, and this fight could probably help to figure out where to place Chandler at in the rankings. Um, uh, is, I see you, Dwight. Is Khabib done? Um, I don't think he's done. If you saw the announcement that uh, Dana made, he said that Khabib will be watching closely these two fights to see and use those fights, the outcome of those fights, to determine how he wants to move forward. So it looks like there is a, I guess maybe we're at a 50-50 whether or not he's going to come back. I don't know. Um, but I agree. Chandler and Hooker is going to be a definite banger. It absolutely will be. Um, wow. Um, but this fight also will be a significant determiner of how, excuse me, uh, of how uh, the lightweight division will move forward. Both of these fights, the... Uh, the Poirier versus McGregor fight and the Chandler versus Hooker fight will have, at least I feel like, will have lightweight title contention implications. I really feel like that. Um, Michael Chandler, he sits at 21 and 5. His last Bellator fight was in August. Uh, Dan Hooker, he's at 20 and 9, and he's still looking for his first UFC title shot. So I'm not sure if that hunger could be motivating him. But um, he's, he's in the mix now, especially if he beats Michael Chandler. Um, his fight, Hooker's last fight, was a UV loss to Poirier, who will be fighting McGregor, uh, back in June. So, again, this, this, these next two fights this Saturday are, are going to be a monumental in regards to the status of the lightweight division structure and the ranking thereof. So, we will find out very, very soon. What's going to happen? Um, so make sure you guys tune in next Sunday. We will be talking about those fights, the results thereof, and whatever else we have on the ballot. Um, but yeah, always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. So 
I will see y'all next Sunday. And until then, talk to you later, family.